This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. The dead don't speak, but their stories do. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring defense attorney and host of the podcast, Defense Diaries, Bob Mata. The trial against Richard Allen, it's coming up here in October and several motions uh, being presented before Judge Gull recently. And, uh, well, what we know so far of what's come back, they have been denied the motion to dismiss. But there are still a couple that are pending. Joining me to discuss and explain where things are at, Bob Mata, defense attorney, host of the podcast Defense Diaries. Get it wherever you get podcasts. All right. What's your thoughts where we're sitting right here right now waiting for Gull to uh, come back on that uh, third party defense, uh, third party culprit theory uh, and the uh, you know denial of, of dismissing all this. It's it's coming. Trials yeah. coming and soon. Uh, tw- like we're talking like a little less than two months. Or yeah, maybe. Slight- and that is the blink of an eye for attorneys preparing for a case like this. So, yeah, we're waiting on a couple of different rulings really the most critical rulings in the eyes of the defense, uh, far more than the motion to dismiss, which she denied. I fully anticipated that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a huge ask of a court to to have them dismiss charges based on. And their concept was that the, the state had uh, knowingly or intentionally destroyed evidence, namely uh, interviews by one of their third party culprit suspects, Brad Holder. Uh, Gull was not compelled. She did not she did not find it to be a compelling argument. She felt that they didn't address the timeline and the fact that in the estimation of law enforcement Brad Holder's alibied out because he was at work during the day. Mm-hmm. Now I've been saying all along with this case if I were the defense attorneys I would be attacking the timeline mm-hmm. because what is establishing the time of death here it appears to be activity on Libby Libby's phone and that's it. Yeah, there we we in the hearing it came out that they have not that they never took a body temperature of the girls when they were discovered, uh, and that there was no time of death fixed by the medical examiner. Which in the world of true crime, if you know anything about true crime, timelines are everything. Yeah. So the attack has to be that this took place at a much later time because the state has now. In that very same hearing, they they locked themselves in to two thir- between 2.30 and 3.30 is when they believe that the girls were killed. Not mm-hmm. 2.15, like Holman on the stand said, 2.30 to 3.30. That's when we think this happened. So if you're the defense, you're attacking that. You're saying, sure. okay, well, uh, what is your proof of that? Like, what is it? And, and we have this, this new evidence. So the motion to dismiss, I was not surprised she denied that. That is, a, like I said, that's a that's a extreme measure for the court to take. I never thought that she was going to grant that in a million years. It did it did give you some insight into her mindset, though. Mm-hmm. Like like she is of the mindset that the holder alibi is legit. Yeah, she is of the mindset that the timeline is legit. Like it just she just showed her hand. Yeah, like she did not need to make those findings. I was surprised that she did, frankly. Um, but you know, uh, and as far as the other one, it was a motion to compel, uh, wherein the defense was trying to get, uh, certain evidence that they say is still outstanding. The only thing that I know is still outstanding is, uh, the forensic guy for ISP, Indiana state police, Mm -hmm. uh, trooper Cecil is doing an updated cellulite extraction of Libby's phone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think that was due uh, yeah, like she, she from the date that the order dropped, they had ten days to get that over to the sure. defense, so which is, you know, we're seven years in, man, yeah. and they're still they're still doing extractions of Libby's phone. Now their excuse is is that they're using the most updated, uh, you know, version of Cellubrite and that it has more tools, which I'm cool with. Sure, you know, I mean, like as long as they're getting the the reports of everything that preceded that. And, and the, if law yeah. enforcement's continuing to try to, to mine information out of that phone through updates that have added features through Cellebrite, I mean, do it. Yeah. Like we're trying to get to the truth here, Yeah, you know, and I, and I hope that law enforcement's trying to get to the truth here. If there's something on that phone, yeah. like we know that at four 33 AM flood of text messages that come in, which means that the phone inexplicably in my estimation somehow connected to that tower, mm-hmm. 
you know, after sitting there for 11 hours, not connecting with AT&T pinging every 15 minutes is problematic for the state. Yeah. Like if I, if I'm the defense, I consider that to be a real wedge that that I'm, I'm attacking really, really hard. Now, whether or not you're going to be able to get a jury to understand the concept that it appears either the phone was off Mm -hmm. and then turned on or the phone was off, brought off site. And then when the killer got back, because the, the phone clearly seems to have been, been left purposefully. Yeah. And and it seems to be like if I were arguing the case, I'd argue, look, the phone was turned on because the killer wanted the girls to be found. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they 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 knew that they'd be pinging that phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody knows in this day and age with the phone technology, they always know where we're at. Yeah. Oh, so that to, to me, the most reasonable explanation as to why the phone came on is because the killer wanted the girls. Found, covered yeah yeah timeline's gonna be very key in all this when it finally does go to trial here uh in october it's fascinating we'll see where the rest of her uh decisions lie on the third party culprit here in the uh the coming weeks you're in the thick of a true crime saga every detail sinking in and then wham a commercial about something you couldn't care less about it's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and savor every twisted detail without interruption.